His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa has sent a cable congratulations to Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa on being elected uncontested as President of the Bahrain Basketball Association. His Royal Highness said that the election of Sheikh Isa bin Ali reflects a distinguished position he enjoys among the sports community and the confidence in his ability to develop the game in Bahrain and achieve local and regional successes. He also said that this election proves the confidence in Bahraini youth comp competencies and their ability to reach top positions at GCC and Arab levels. The Prime Minister stressed the government's support to all efforts aimed at boosting the youth and sports sector and to all sports associations in Bahrain, including BBA. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Al Mullah, said in a statement marking the International Day of Democracy, celebrated on the September 15th, under the theme Democracy and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, that Bahrain has become a role model for comprehensive and sustainable development based on solid foundations through the reform project, the democratic process, the state of law and institutions, the implementation of the government action plan, and the economic vision for Bahrain 2030. He affirmed that the milestone achievements of the kingdom over the past years under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the legislative, political, economic and development fields prove that it is making confident strides towards ensuring a brighter future. Al Mullah added that the success of the kingdom's parliamentary experience, the consolidation of human rights principles, protection of freedoms and the activation of the state of law institutions have opened up new horizons for the nation. He affirmed that the legislature had joined hands with the executive in serving the kingdom, enhancing communication with the citizens, which he said contributed to boosting the comprehensive development march of the kingdom. He lauded the effective cooperation of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Shura Council affirmed on the occasion of the International Day of Democracy 2016 that the reform and the democratic march under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa made significant accomplishments for the kingdom and achieved sustainable development. The Council hailed the UN theme, Democracy and the 2030 Agenda, praising the democracy of Bahrain and the Economic Vision 2030, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister they also hailed the government policies led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa in his efforts in providing security and social protection and developing the legislative system. The Council highlighted the positive outcomes of the 35th session of the Arab Council of Ministers and Social Affairs held in April in enhancing partnership between the civil society and the private sector and maintaining security, peace and stability for the Arab nation. The GCC countries expressed their disappointment for the negative comments of the UN Human Rights Commissioner yesterday with regard to the human rights situation in Bahrain, adding that such comments do not reflect the actual human rights situation in the Kingdom of Bahrain and its well-known positive records. The Human Rights Committee at the Council of Representatives expressed its rejection of the comments of the UN Commissioner with regards to human rights in Bahrain, adding that what was delivered during his speech was more of a political rather than legislative comment. The committee added that the initiatives and achievements of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of human rights are aimed at the people of Bahrain's interests, highlighting that Bahrain is a state of law and institution and has a reform project and democratic march that is very keen towards its people's interests. The committee asserted that the judicial authority in Bahrain enjoys decency and independence, and its rulings are based on transparency. It added that measures taken against violators were based on law and are in line with legal procedures. It went on to say that the Kingdom of Bahrain adheres to laws that protect the rights of its people and freedom in the country is in accordance with the law and constitution. The committee went further to say that over the past 10 years, Bahrain has witnessed reforms in human rights initiatives that are considered unique and civilized, highlighting that the subjective statements and comments against the Kingdom are one-sided, do not reflect reality, and need to be reviewed and reconsidered by the Human Rights Council. The Human Rights Committee at the Representative Council voiced disappointment with the speech of the UN Commissioner against the Kingdom of Bahrain for not reflecting reality in Bahrain's developed human rights record. The committee expressed thanks and appreciation to Bahrain's delegation participating in the 33rd meeting of the Human Rights Council for their efforts in standing against false allegations which targeted the Kingdom of Bahrain. 
It also expresses thanks to the representative of the GCC and other friendly countries who have firmed their support to the Kingdom of Bahrain. Saudi Arabia affirmed its unwavering stance that promoting human rights worldwide does not reflect imposing principles and values that contravene Islamic precepts. The Saudi representative to the United Nations and other international organizations in Geneva, Faisal Tarad, stressed in a speech before the UN Rights Council today that a sovereign state is the first responsible for boosting human rights and that the High Commissioner for Human Rights Office's role is to help assuming their responsibility by building personal capabilities while respecting full sovereignty of those countries. Commenting on the situation of human rights in Bahrain, Tarad voiced the regret of Saudi Arabia over the High Commissioner's ignorance of the real efforts made by the Bahraini government to protect human rights within the framework of its sovereign right to defend its security and stability and confront foreign interference. Here it's constructive dialogue with the Bahraini authorities to promote human rights and prevent sending a wrong message to those having no concern for Bahrain's security and stability. The United Arab Emirates voiced its regret for human rights commissioners' disregard for the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain for coming up with reconciliation for the situation. The permanent representative of the UAE for Human Rights in Geneva, Mr. Azraibi, highlighted in his speech before the Council that the commissioners focusing on negative issues alone will give a wrong image of the situation in Bahrain. Mr. Azraibi asserted that constructive negotiation rather than confrontation is the best approach to overcoming the situation in Bahrain. He called for activating a true and transparent dialogue that takes into consideration the noble goals parties are aiming for but taking into consideration interests of the countries. Kuwait's permanent representative to the United Nations and other international organizations in Geneva, Ambassador Jamal al ghanim said that Bahrain's efforts to promote human rights requires respect and praise as he highlighted the large positive cooperation extended by the Kingdom of Bahrain. Kuwait's news agency reported that al ghanim told the 33rd session of the UN Human Rights Council that the model presented by the Kingdom of Bahrain in dealing with human rights thus year deserves all the respect and appreciation and they must be matched by issuing encouraging signs this came during his commenting on the report of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights on Human Rights in the World. al ghanim also expressed his country's concern about the situation in the Middle East due to the continuation of wars and armed conflicts, which are destroying everything. The ambassador said that vulnerable groups are exposed to violations and the consequent displacement, thus becoming the first victims. He expressed strong condemnation of the state of Kuwait and its opposition to the continuation of Israel's occupation of Palestinian territories and its clear violations against the unarmed Palestinian people, thereby flouting international law, international humanitarian law, and the Human Rights Council and its decisions. The ambassador said that Kuwait shares the concern of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights about the situation in Syria, pointing out that Kuwait feels the pain of the distressed Syrian people over serious violations of their fundamental rights and freedoms. He renewed Kuwait's demand for all parties to respect the agreement on the cessation of hostilities and calls for facilitating the entry of humanitarian aid and relief agencies to all areas. El Ghanim pointed out that the pioneering role of Kuwait in the face of the largest humanitarian disaster facing Syrians in Syria through the organization and hosting of the three donor conferences to support the humanitarian situation there and co-chairing the fourth conference which was held in London with Britain, Germany and Norway. He also reiterated Kuwait's support to achieve security and stability in Yemen, praising the achievements of the National Commission of Inquiry that submitted its report emphasizing Kuwait's keenness on supporting the Yemeni International Committee in its tasks and endeavors. He pointed out that the state of Kuwait supports all efforts to embrace tolerance and ensure a culture of peace so as to promote human rights and equality of all stemming from the Arab Islamic culture. <laughs>